Tonight, I'm going to continue along that vein of our words and having power. We remember, or I hope you remember, when you first got saved, you confessed with your mouth and you believed in your heart, correct? Let's turn to Romans 10. sure you know the scriptures, Romans 10, 9, and 10. And I will be reading from the Amplified Version. Because if you acknowledge and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and in your heart believe, adhere to, trust in, and rely on the truth that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, adheres to, trusts in, and relies on Christ, and so is justified, declared righteous, acceptable to God, and with the mouth he confesses, declares openly, and speaks out freely his faith, and confirms his salvation. So that's how we came into the knowledge of Christ, by confessing those words by speaking it with our mouth, believing it in our hearts. And Jesus Christ became our savior. He dwelt within us and he empowered us. So you acknowledged, you confessed, you spoke it, and you believed it. And you trusted and relied on the truth, the truth of God's word. You spoke it with your mouth. And I believe, uh, you said, I believe, Lord, that you are the Son of God who came in the flesh. This is the prayer of salvation. I believe, Lord, that you are the Son of God who came in the flesh to die for my sins. You believed if you repented and spoke it out and turned completely away from sin, which is basically separating you from God, and that's living your life independently of the will of God, in other words, doing your own thing, doing what you want to do, you told God that you were sorry. When you confessed that you told God that you were sorry. And then Jesus would come into your heart and you would be saved from eternal separation from God, right? You acknowledged the truth and you confessed it and you believed the truth. And Jesus came to live in your heart and now you and me, if we have made that confession, are now saved. Glory to his name. Now, if we spoke the word of God, the truth of God, what is so different now? What is so different now? If you spoke and believed in that day that you confessed Jesus Christ and truly believed it by faith that you would be saved, what's the difference now? 
What is the difference now in speaking what we believe God for, what we believe him to do in our lives? What has changed? What has changed? God is still the same God. We still get saved the same way, by faith, through confession in our word. So how come sometimes it's so hard to just confess the word of God over our circumstances and trust our God to make the change? Galatians 3 and 13. Let's just turn there real quick. Galatians 3 and 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree. I actually just want to uh, deal with the A clause. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Okay? Because with salvation came redemption, and that was according to Galatians 3 and 13. Christ has redeemed us from that curse. In other words, in the Amplified Version says, Christ purchased our freedom. So salvation not only is being saved from hell and delivered from death, but also from sickness, disease, poverty, lack, anything, any other complications that we may deal with in life. In other words, he did it all on the cross. But how do we invoke or exact these promises from the word of God? How do we exact or bring these blessings, these promises into our lives? Again, it is through the word of God. The power is in your tongue. It's in your mouth. Speak what you want. Speak the blessings that you want, not the cursing. Speak the healing that you want, not what you're feeling in your body, but speak what you want from God. <laughs> Prosperity, not lack. Speak the word only. Exact or draw in the promises of God. The word of God can be like a magnet. As we speak the word of God, what we want is drawn to us because of who lives in us. Because now we are connected with him. We are connected with God. So those things that we speak come to us. As we speak the word of God, as we believe the word of God, and as we live the word of God. It's important to be obedient. Because if you're not obedient, then the enemy can come in. And even though he... The power is really not there, but because we are feeling condemned or because we're feeling some kind of way, as they say, then we can't exact the full promise of God because now we have something blocking us and hindering us from what God has promised us. So speak the word only. The Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So we have to be careful. The word also says... We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus Christ, that which was done for us on the cross and in us when we confess Christ and by the word of our testimony. What are you testifying? What are you saying? What are you speaking? Do you know that you're an overcomer? Are you an overcomer? Are you an overcomer today and undergoing a whole something else tomorrow? personally, through your personality, or through changes the next day or minute. We have to be careful. An, un, an uh, un, uh, unstable person, a double-minded person is unstable in all of their ways. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. And as the body of Christ, we really have to stop being schizophrenic. We have to stop being double-minded. If you don't know who you are, how will you know where you are going? The word of God is a stabilizer. It is truth. It is life. The word of God aligns us with the will of God. So no longer are we tossed to and fro. Ephesians 4 and 14 says, like children carried away or about wavering with every wind or doctrine. Again, instability. The, um, the Living Bible reads this way. Then we will no longer be like children, forever changing our minds about what we believe because someone has told us something different or has cleverly lied. In other words, you've been deceived. Deception has come in and made, 
and made it sound like the truth. When we were down at Black Expo on, when, on, on Saturday, a young man came to the booth and actually uh, Brother Smalls spoke with him first. Now, this man had been raised, I believe, apostolic or holiness, and he had walked with the Lord. He was only 22 at this point. He came to Brother Small, and Brother Small, Deacon Small, prayed for him um, and told me later on that this brother had a spirit of fear. I hadn't talked with the brother, hadn't even seen him, but God brought him back to the booth. And so I began to talk to him, and I said, Deacon Small said that you're dealing with fear. I said, well, fear is a spirit. And I just began to talk to him. I began to ask him, are you saved? Do you know God? He said, yes, I've been saved since he was about 15 or so. He had been saved for a while. But what happened was, I guess he had began to visit different churches. And in visiting different churches, he was told that he no longer needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because I asked him, I said, do you pray daily? He said, yes. I said, are you in the word daily? He said, sometimes. I said, well, have you ever been filled with the Holy Spirit? He said, yes, but I don't need that anymore. <laughs> I said, excuse me? He said, I don't need that anymore. I said, well, where did you learn that at? Who told you that? And he said, well, just different churches I've been visiting. I don't need to speak in tongues. And I said, right then and there, that's the opening because you believed the truth, and then you turned around and confessed a lie. And now you are filled with fear, because the word says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So now the enemy's trying to steal the soundness of his mind by placing fear in him. And he said he's, fear of every, he's scared of everything. He listens to the news, things on TV. I told him, well, you know what? I'm glad that you're here tonight, because sometimes when people are in that kind of fear, they don't even want to leave their homes. So I told him, God has a reason for you being here tonight. And we began to talk, and I told him, you know, you're going to have to get back into the truth and to the word of God. And you're going to have to renounce what you have heard. You have to repent of what you have believed so that God can turn this situation around. I said, because fear has to do with torment. I said, are you being tormented? Yes, you can't sleep at night, that's torment. He believed a lie. So we really have to be careful. We have to make the right confessions and we have to remember who is speaking into our lives. You cannot open yourself up to everybody or everything. So even as it says in Ephesians 4 and 14, he was cleverly lied to, he was deceived. And the lie was made to sound like the truth. We are responsible for our salvation. We are responsible for what we allow to speak into our spirit man. We're responsible. God holds us responsible. So that's why it's important what we allow, what we allow to come into us. And we have to let the word of God get deep down in us. This 90-day word challenge that we are, it's probably the biggest blessing you will have this year. And the reason why I am saying that is because it is something that cannot be taken away from you. Once the word of God is in you, feeding your spirit, man, nobody or nothing can take it away. Because believe me, when a lie comes, something is going to click in your spirit, and you're going to know something's not right. Something is not lining up with the word of God there went to a funeral uh, about a month or so ago, and uh, a woman had passed. And one of the uh, ministers got up and said, well, you know what? Don't fear. Don't worry. Because anytime you want to talk to her, you can just talk to her. <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay. And, and what he was saying was, because she's with God, now you can just talk to her. I don't know how many people receive that, but that's a dangerous thing. That's a dangerous thing to tell people they can talk with the dead. And so we really have to be careful. And I thank God for our pastor that really 
places it in us, reiterate it time after time after time. Know the word for yourself. Read the word for yourself. Don't just take it because someone has a title, pastor or elder or apostle. We have to know the word for ourselves. It's a dangerous thing to tell people they can talk to a demon because that's what you're talking to when you talk to the dead. You're opening yourself up to all kinds of attack. So get the word down into it for down into your spirit for yourself. Declare the word. Speak the word daily. Make the word of God part of your daily confessions. You have to know for yourself the word of God. And you have to know who you are in the you have to know who you are in God. Feed your spirit man daily. Just how we feed our body food, nutritious food, we have to feed our spirit man because we were created in the image of our God. And our God is a spirit. Our Father is a spirit. Therefore, we have to uh, feed ourselves spirit words, spirit food, which is the word of God. And as you begin to feed your spirit man, then the you who God created in his image, that's who will begin to emerge. You will begin to know who you are in Christ, what your calling is, what your purpose is, what you're here for. Because God says, I have a plan and a purpose for each one of us. The only way you're going to know what that plan and purpose is is to get into the face of God. Lay before him. Talk to him. He's going to talk back to you. Get in the word. And you're going to know it's God speaking to you because he's going to speak in line with his word. He's going to speak his word always. And you will know who you are, as I said, as you begin to speak God's truth over your situations, over your life, over the challenges. Begin to speak what God's word says about what we're going through. Whatever you have need of, it's in the Bible. Healing, deliverance. Maybe you're going through some type of uh, a depression or something. Uh, maybe you're having issues with your family, with your spouse with your children, on your job. There's nothing that's not in the word of God that we cannot find. It's all in there. He covered it all. He covered it all. So speak the word of God over your life. There's another situation, uh, a woman that I work with, she's probably about my age, very gifted, very, very talented. She um, brings me and shows me different creations that she's made purses from Bibles and books, shawls, blouses, you name it. She puts her hands to it. It's done. It's a creation. And I told her, she, we work for the government. I said, well, you know, she, she's about to retire, but I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to, uh, to sustain myself. She's, she's married. Uh, but the problem is, is the insecurity. I've probably been ministering to her probably about two good years, but there's a spirit of insecurity, believing a lie, believing what people have spoken over you, uh, believing what her family has said to her. So now there's a spirit of insecurity and all the gifting that you could possibly imagine. She sees it in her mind's eye and she creates it. That's a gift. But yet she's intimidated because of what people have spoken over her. So now she backs away from what God has for her. But as we get the word of God down in us, no one can take that away. No one can't take away from you the word of God when it's in you. A few um, weeks ago, pastor was saying uh, through Joshua 1 and 8, and that really kind of stayed with me, through Joshua 1 and 8, and it's a very familiar scripture, I just couldn't figure out if I was going to use my Bible or my pad, my notepad. But uh, Joshua 1 and 8 reads, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, 
that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Good success. The word meditate means to mutter, to speak constantly. So release the word of God constantly. Then you shall make thy way, then he shall make thy way prosperous, and then shall you have good success. It also goes on to say to be strong and courageous by speaking the word of God, by studying the word of God, by muttering the word of God constantly during the day, at work, in the supermarket. Just speak the word of God. Just encourage yourself. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, pray in the Spirit. You're strengthening your spirit, man. But mutter the word of God. Then you shall prosper and have good success. And had this young brother did that, the one I was telling you about earlier, then he would have been strong and very courageous, not afraid or dismayed. But as he muttered the word or confessed the word daily, as he read it, write it, how, whatever it takes for you to get the word of God down in your spirit, that's what you want to do. Write the vision. Make it plain. Write it out. Sometimes we have to write the word of God out. I may know the scripture, but I will write it out. Because that way I know it's getting into my spirit, man. Speak it, say it, live it. And this is a quick exercise that we're going to do. And I used to do this exercise daily um, when I first got saved. But now, uh, because the word is in me, um, I don't necessarily do this exercise daily. But the exercise is, um, and along with praying and reading the word, is confessions. It's, it's making confessions. And these are the confessions that I've made. And I've even written them out for people. Um, I should have typed this up, but I didn't. But um, speak as it is written. And I'm going to say these confessions, and you can say them with me if you want. I'll probably read a little faster than you can say it, but that's okay. Get it in your spirit, man. I am the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Go ahead, let's say it with me. I am the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. I am created in the image of God. Therefore, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God has not given me a spirit of fear but of love, power, and a sound mind. I have the mind of Christ. I am more than a conqueror. I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. I am the beloved of God. I am the apple of his eye. The power of life and death is in my tongue and I choose life by his stripes I am healed therefore sickness and disease cannot stay in my body amen 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 for the joy of the Lord is my strength. I have the power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I say that more than once because Fear is a door opener, and so many of us walk in fear. Their fear comes in many forms, doubt, worry. That's all fear, intimidation, nervousness, shyness. That's all the spirit of fear. So that's why I make sure I say that. Uh, my children used to have dreams a lot, uh, especially my oldest son. Uh, 
you know, just the enemy trying to attack him. I wrote him, I wrote that scripture out, I don't know, he might have been like five, six, or seven. And I made him say that scripture every night. And so they remember these things. They're never too young to get the word of God. I mean, he's, he's 28 now. But um, they're never too young to get the word of God down in you. Okay? I am of a royal priesthood. Chosen generation. Set apart for the plans and the purposes of God. And whatever I put my hands to shall prosper. Therefore, no hurt, no harm, no danger can come nigh my dwelling place. For I am hid in Christ Jesus. Amen, amen, and so be it. Amen, amen. And what you do when you read these scriptures or make these confessions, put your name in it. Put your children's name in it. Personalize it. We serve a personal God. When you have a relationship with God, there's nothing you can't share with him. So speak his word. Speak his word over your situation. Speak his word over your children. Train your mouth to speak the word of God only. You have a pain in your leg or in your knee or a headache. By Jesus stripes, I am healed. I am healed. The other day I was felt like I was getting a sore throat. And I just, I've been saying, oh, my throat. And I started to realize I was saying it. So I had to... First of all, Father, forgive me, and I covered my, put my hand over my throat and said, by Jesus' stripes, I am healed. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And it has to go. I hadn't even thought about it anymore until just now. So we have to really, really speak the word. Train yourself. I don't care if you're a baby Christian. Train yourself. This is the best time now as a baby Christian to train yourself in the word of God and walk in faith. Walk in faith. How did you get saved? By faith. How do we walk? Daily by faith. Through building ourselves up in the word of God. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. 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 So speak the word only and you shall have great success, child of God. Amen and amen. Thank you. Well, let's My people.